wanna talk? So let's talk. Good evening and welcome. It's Talk to Solomon on Election Day, November the uh, 6th, 2012. My guest and co-host, Greg W. Howard. Greg, let's start with the discussion about the financial cliff. Many people don't know what it is, but you do. Would you explain it to everyone, please? Well, there are a lot of things coming up. First of all, uh, there are a number of budget provisions put in called sequester. Unless they come to some sort of budget deal... Between now and Janu uh, January 1st, there are automatic cuts built into the budget that are going to be draconian, they are arbitrary, and they will cost hundreds of thousands of jobs from the, just the defense industry. As a matter of fact, I believe it is uh, Lockheed that is saying that they will have to lay off 123,000 by the end of the year if this process is not stopped. That is just one defense contractor. Now, technically, these layoffs should have already been announced, but by law. But Obama said that he would pay the fines of these contractors if they would forestall making the announcements until after the election. One, that's illegal. Two, with whose money was he going to pay the fines? Anyway, that's one aspect of what the financial cliff is coming. So you're going to see a huge number of people hit the unemployment lines. Second of all, what you're going to see come up in uh, January 1st is the end of the Bush tax cuts unless somehow they're extended. Well, a lot of people say, well, big deal. We're going to raise taxes on the rich. Let me tell you what's going to happen. The bottom tax rate is going to go from 10 to 15 percent. That means that the poorest Americans who do pay income taxes are going to see their taxes go up 50 percent. That is a 50 percent tax increase on the lowest income taxpayers, you're going to see a 33% a uh, increase in the capital gains rate. That will kill uh, investment in the stock market. As a matter of fact, if there's no light at the end of the tunnel very soon, you may see people start selling their stocks, which will cause a collapse of the stock market. Though, again, people will go, no, no big deal. Look at your 401k. Probably most of it's sitting in the stock market. Your retirement money is sitting in the stock market. If you're drawing a defined pension and you're sitting at home and you're, or you're a union member uh, counting on your pension plan, guess where it is invested? The stock market. So you better wake up and think about that as a problem. So all these folks who think that this financial cliff is no, no big deal, it's all going to hurt the rich people, it is going to hurt everyone across the board. We're going to talk stock market collapse. We're going to talk glut of people hitting unemployment lines. You're going to see a ripple effect through the economy. You're going to see the economy go back into recession. I don't think it ever really came out if you look at the way they fudged the GDP numbers, but be that as it may, it is going to lead to calamity. And you haven't even mentioned the fact that on this sequestration, tens of thousands of government workers are going to lose their jobs, right? Exactly right. Uh, that, that is uh, exactly right. These cuts will not only involve contractors. I just use the contractors because that's where the biggest number is going to be. But you're going to see government wake workers thrown out of work. So all these union government workers are going to find themselves unemployed as well. So all these folks who think, oh, Obama's out, going to take care of them. If you voted for him today, you were sold a bill of goods and you're a moron. Well, let's not insult morons. Uh, that's not nice. <laughs> Okay. All right. let, let us talk about this race, because there's a, a great deal of discussion about the popular vote, and there's a discussion about the Electoral College and the Electoral Vote. Now, this race basically comes down to Ohio, Virginia, Wisconsin, possibly Florida, although they pretty well think that's going to go Romney's way, but then you can throw in Colorado and Iowa uh, possibly New Hampshire, um, you know, th that's the election. Uh, as those states go, 
so will go the electoral vote, but we have something called the United States Senate. And the question is, will Romney's uh, win in some states and or will Obama's win in some states help to pull the rest of the ticket, they being the top of the ticket? Can you talk about that for a moment? Well, Obama doesn't have much in the way of coattails because people do not invite Obama to come and campaign for him. So that tells you what his coattails are worth. As a matter of fact, uh, people who actively supported Obama and Obamacare are in deep trouble. I point to Claire McCaskill in uh, Missouri. I think she is going to lose her job in the Senate. That's one Senate seat tipped over to the Republicans. I think that Nelson in Florida is in deep trouble. Uh, he is another, he's the one who sold out his vote for a number of goodies in exchange for his Obamacare vote. Uh, so I don't know. I think that I think the Republicans have a very, very good chance of taking over the Senate. Now, actually, that and was Nelson in Nebraska that did the, the, the courthouse court kickback, not Nelson in Florida. Oh, well, there's another Nelson in Florida. There is, yeah. He was the insurance commissioner. I think he's in trouble, but not because... Of selling out on Obamacare, although he voted. Well, he for did it. as well. He, he he got his fair share. Um, he's not the extent of the Cornhusker kickback, no question. But uh, every senator who voted for Obamacare had their hand in the till. Well, okay. Well, all right. Well, let's go further. You have in Indiana Murdoch, who's presently behind by one and a half percent, where Romney's comfortably ahead, although. We don't know who's reported. It's only 2% or 3% in at this point. They've called Indiana for Romney, by the way. Yeah, 8%. 8%. Now, where is the uh, race for Murdoch right now with 8% in? I'm waiting for that to flash by my screen. I have it it's muted, still, so I'm not listening. It, it's 48-46 uh, with Donnelly ahead, even though they've already called the state for Romney. They've also, by the way, called Kentucky and West Virginia for Romney, as I understand. And, right. And uh, we're going to see a lot of states... Uh, in the Eastern Time Zone, called pretty quickly. You know, we pretty well know that, you know, Maine and and Ver Vermont's already been called for for Obama, but we're going to see Connecticut and Rhode Island and Delaware and and Maryland and Massachusetts and all those states uh, are New York called for uh, Obama. The question is going to become: What about Pennsylvania? What about Michigan? What about Wisconsin? What about Minnesota? Are these states in play? Because in the past, those have been, you know, very uh, dependable blue states. Well, here's what I'm going to look at early, uh, because these are the ones that are going to come in early. I'm going to look at Florida, North Carolina, and Virginia. Those were states carried in the past by Obama, and I'm going to look at the margins of victories in those states. If they go badly against Obama early in the evening, then the route is on. I think that's a fair statement, uh you know, South Carolina's also been called for Romney. Um, but again, these are all expected. The, the real question now is, uh, where is it all going to work out? Uh, I just came back from California where Obama is uh, popular, but it, I was surprised by how many people uh, were just very, you know, I'm not voting for Obama. I can't afford to. And I think I can't afford to is what this election is about, don't you? Oh, it, it always comes down to pocketbook issues. At the end of the day, people sit around the kitchen table, and the kitchen table is the final economic uh, or the final arbiter of how people vote. Uh, you know, people look at the government statistics, you know, like the Consumer Price Index, and it leaves, and they say, well, inflation's under control. But the consumer price index doesn't count two things that affect every American family more than anything else, and that is food and energy. These are two of the top items in every family's budget is how to get to work and then how to feed your family. Those are not counted, and people are painfully aware of that. You know, when you need a defibrillator, when you go down the meat aisle, people are aware of inflation, and, and people are aware of the food and energy costs. and. And uh, they're aware that they're out of work or that their next-door neighbor is out of work or that their brother living in their basement is out of work. Well, there's no question about that, and, and uh, we'll you know, see how that all plays out tonight. Now, the, you know, the cheating thing we've kind of talked about, let's talk about something else, the debt limit. You know, that's staring us right in the face. It will have to be decided upon before the end of the year. Uh, there's talk about the EPA 
and or other regulatory groups if Obama loses, uh, just blasting us. Your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, uh, Obama is a very dangerous individual because we've already discussed uh, in my previous appearances on your show that this man is, uh, uh, I think, a sociopath and that uh, when a sociopath finds his world collapse around him, they go scorched earth. And one of the things he would love nothing better to do if he's voted out of office is to, well, I'll show you on the way out the door. They already have a time bomb built into the EPA against the coal industry, massive regulations that would just absolutely decimate the industry. And this would be passed into by, a, by an EPA totally accountable with a lame duck Congress that can't really do anything about it, by a lame duck president. It's just a nightmare that this much uh, activity could take place with a lame duck session, which is traditionally one that just sits around and does administrative housekeeping stuff like pass the budget for the next year, but we haven't had a budget for three and a half years. So I would look for some very nefarious things. There's some talk about possibly ratifying a Senate a U.N. gun ban treaty in a Senate that may be on its way out the door if uh, the Senate turns hands. So I would be very, very uh, leery about what may happen in a, in a lame duck session. Well, I think we're all concerned about that. They, they can't overcome a filibuster in the Senate, and they can't get anything through the House like what you're being talked about. So I think that it'll all be presidential directives and executive orders uh, and mm-hmm. regulations uh, by these various regulatory organizations. I don't think any of it will go through the Congress. Right, and Obama has shown that he has absolutely no compunction against using illegal executive orders and regulatory uh, a, uh, use of regulatory agencies in order to get whatever he wants. All right, let's look again at the map. And you mentioned Virginia. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask you, you know, with what we've heard about happening in Pennsylvania with Republicans being thrown out, of, uh, Republican judges being physically thrown out, where, you know, murals of, of Obama are in the polling places. And in Texas, where NAACP officials wearing Obama gear are inside the polling places. Where in Ohio, you had uh, van loads of Somalians, most of whom can't speak a word of English, most of whom are not here legally, going and voting. Uh, and <coughs> no one will <coughs> honor challenges because these are Democrat-controlled areas. And a, a GOP voting judge in Detroit was threatened with a gun, and the 911 call was laughed off. Uh, it's, it's sick out there. Um, in Philadelphia, they did get a judge to order that the Obama picture be covered up, but they did a half-hearted effort of covering it up. The logo was still available and seen. Uh, they stuck a couple of ballots over a full-wall mural like that would do anything. Uh, but I understand that the Navy SEALs uh, showed up and... Uh, started intimidating the Black Panthers, and that was, uh, you can see that on YouTube, that's worth the price of admission. Oh yeah, I'm sure that these heroes, these black heroes, these Black Panther heroes, these uh, I'm going to do what I'm going to do to you, cracker cracker, uh, found that uh, they grew wings and flew away, I I, I would guess. Yeah, uh, it was was rather humorous to watch what happens when real heroes confront cowards. Yeah, I'd love to see that. I, I didn't see that before the show started. I want you to see something that I think is the height of, of audacity. Could you play that video we have of former Governor Howard Dean? Governor, I mean, that's, that's a big charge. I mean, do you, think, do you think the president could... You do believe if he loses Ohio, it'll be because of voting irregularities? I do. I do. I think given the, the only way he loses Ohio? That's correct. Given the, given the vote uh, and the leading of the polls... Uh, in Ohio, uh, the only way he can lose is if people are prevented from casting their ballots, either by voting machines that aren't functioning right or other forms of harassment. Democrats have learned, and I'll give them credit for having balls the size of our deficit and brains the size of our surplus, uh, that the best uh, defense is a good offense. And they're accusing the Republicans of cheating, knowing full well that 99%, if not 99.9% of all cheating is done by Democrats. Greg? That's classic projection. Um, And in this case, uh, Howard Dean is already uh, setting up to scream foul when they know that... that, that, You know what that tells me is that they're going to lose Ohio and they know it. So he's already setting up the challenge and the screaming and the the reason for the projected riots 
that are going to take place when Obama loses. Right, and let's go there, because on Twitter, and you've seen that, you're one of the major players in, on Twitter, uh, there have been not subtle, not humorous, not uh, tongue-in-cheek, but flat out, if Obama loses, I'm going to go out and kill white people. Am I right or wrong? Oh, you're absolutely right, and it's not isolated individuals, it's groups, and it's protracted, and it's sustained, and it's going on uh, over a long period of time. As soon as Obama looked like he was in trouble, which was several weeks ago, these uh, threats, uh, and it's really interesting, if, if it weren't serious, the tweets would be humorous to read because they're so darn illiterate. I'm a riot, I'm a riot, uh, and I don't mean to throw the ebonics on there, but you can almost hear it. But it is absolutely terrible, the, the poor grammar. But these folks are dead serious. And uh, I have to tell you that they, they better think twice because there are a lot of folks who say, well, you go right ahead and burn and trash your own neighborhood, but the minute you come outside, um, we're not going to have any of that, and we're going to make sure that you don't get any further. And the, it, it's not so much as a, 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 a threat as a direct warning of, you will not come into our neighborhoods and trash our neighborhoods. Well, I, you know, my position is this. I'm going to be in my house minding my business. But you come into my yard with a weapon or with a you know, projectile, with a Molotov cocktail, whatever, I'm going to shoot you and kill you. I'm not going to wound you. I'm going to shoot you, you know, however many rounds I have in the clip, I'm going to empty it right in your head. And I'm going to have enough firearms, that if, there, if you have 10 friends, I'll, I'll take out all 10 of you, and not by myself. Now, I don't wish anyone to be hurt or to be killed, and I don't say this to be one group or another, but I know this. You have no right to destroy me and mine. Period. End of story. Right. right. And I feel exactly the same way, and we have made it very well known here that we will not stand for that in this area. If you want to riot, you go ahead and you burn and trash down your own neighborhood. But the second you step outside of it, there's going to be a line. And if that line is crossed, don't expect to get to be standing. And, and again, I don't want anyone to do anything I don't to want anyone. anyone hurt. There you go. And the way you don't get hurt is don't do it. Exactly. But if I'm at my house with my family... I'm going to protect my house and my, or my family first and my house second. I'm going to do it. And I'm not exactly going to right. ask you about your upbringing, you know, who treated you how or whether or not you had Twinkies for breakfast. It's irrelevant to me at that point. All right, let's talk about Obama's end, the end of his campaign. He was at a major arena. Don't remember exactly where it was, someplace in Ohio. Uh, I think it was Columbus. Perhaps, and, and, and I just don't know, but the bottom, uh, nationwide, that's Columbus. And, and the point is, you would think for the finale, for the end, for the crescendo, for the lasting impression, they would hire people, bust people, or pay people. And the answer is that's exactly what they did, and they still didn't got it half full, and it was an embarrassment. Where Romney, I mean, good grief. He showed up in a small town in Ohio. 32,000 people showed up. Yeah. Well, you know, it, 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 I think that's where we're going to find out what the turnout is going to be today. Is going to be grossly against Obama. By the way, Georgia has just been called. That puts uh, Romney 49 electoral votes to Obama's but, three in race. But that was expected. So that was expected. So there's nothing new here. Yeah. yeah, that's not really breaking news. But getting to what you were just saying, is uh, Obama cannot fill a same arena that he had 80,000 people in before. That, 15,000 versus 80,000 four years ago. In the same there arena. There is no excitement for the man now. And by the way, people should understand, Columbus, Ohio is the home of the largest college campus in population in America. Ohio State has 90,000 students on that campus if he drew from only kids you'd think he'd have 40 or 50 thousand people there right yeah yeah and and on top of that he had big name acts there with him yeah what you know he, he had uh, bruce springsteen didn't he yeah and jay-z i mean yeah and that that speaks to the failure of obama that four years ago 
he could go to these places, and he didn't need to bring top headline entertainment in order to put people in the seats. And now he comes with headline entertainment, and he still can't put people in the seats. By the way, Murdoch and Donnelly in Indiana are now tied. Where, where Donnelly was ahead, now they're tied. They're within a couple hundred votes of each other. So uh, it's going to be an ebb and flow. It depends on where the votes are coming from. Yeah, it's a, you know the inner cities are going to go Democrat, and the uh, suburbs and uh, beyond are going to go Republican. Uh, you can always expect that the uh, deep inner cities will always uh, report as uh, mostly Democrat. Well, the real question is, in Indiana, historically, Lake County has always held out to see how many votes it would take for the Democrat to win, and then they manufacture that many votes because they just don't care uh, about being caught cheating. They just win. Give them credit. They'll stick to it, uh, and that you know, indictments be damned. They they they'll they'll have 197 percent of the people vote whatever it takes in order to get over the, what is needed. So now the Republican strategy is they're holding out on some of the Republican strongholds, so they won't know how many they need, uh, and we'll see how that works. But it'll probably be a long night. But they've already called it for Romney, so that's not even going to be a question. It's only going to be a question who wins this. And this is a key Senate seat because this was a Republican seat. So if the Republicans lose this, they have to win two to be one ahead. Uh, and if they win another one, like beat McCaskill in Missouri, they're, they're still back to being behind and needing four to take a majority, three to have a vice presidential tie, assuming, of course, Romney wins. All right, uh, any other thoughts that you have? Let's talk about this, which hasn't been talked about. One of America's top admirals in charge of our most critical fighting uh, Navy carrier group was dismissed, fired, because he said when the Americans were in trouble in Benghazi, I'm going to help them. Orders be damned, I am not going to let these Americans die, and for that he was fired. Did you hear that? I absolutely did, and I was absolutely nauseated that a, 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 a An flag officer who wanted nothing more than to save American lives, would be fired for it. Well, that's his president. I, I can tell you this. If Romney wins, that man will be reinstated before he's had time to pack his bags. Absolutely. And, and I hope at some point that somebody will have the gumption. I don't know if it'll be a U.S. attorney or if it will be the House of Representatives or if it will be a district attorney, but somebody has got to bring charges of treason against that man in the White House. Well, we all know he's the one that told him to stand down because he didn't want his image of terrorism being over to be affected and that Americans died was, uh, to him, acceptable loss. I have read the definition of treason under Article 3, and this case meets the test. I agree with you, too. All right, we're going to take a break, and we'll come back shortly with uh, Dr. Alan Keyes. Uh, this is the election night show on Talk to Solomon. We're going to stay a little longer, uh, assuming uh, we, uh, we uh, can to try and see what, which way the, the wind is blowing, if you will, to the right or to the left. Stay tuned. You have a computer if you're alive today, which means you have a hard drive, which means it's going to break down. Mosey, the backup people for thousands, for Stan, for thousands of people, for tens of thousands of people, is simply common sense. You go to cpnlive.com, click on the icon for Mosey, the backup people, and sign up. It's, it's just a few dollars a month. Let me tell you something. We had a break in. They stole our whole computer. You know what? When they take the computer, you can't recover anything, but we had Mosey. We had the backup. We were able to restore everything simply by buying another computer. CPNlive.com, click on the icon for Mosey the backup people, and give yourself common sense, peace of mind, great value, the best thing you've ever done. Sooner or later, it's going to be Mosey the backup people. Do you like being healthy? I do. In fact, this product, which I've been taking for years now, is absolutely the answer. 
Now, you may not believe it, but I'm actually 21, plus tax, of course. This product has 146 different healthful nutrients in it, and it's liquid, so it's bioavailable. It tastes great, and it's sugar-free. One ounce of Sonic Life each day will help you to maintain and enhance your health. It's the kind of a gift, well, that you'll thank your mom for, your husband for, your wife for, your kids for. Whoever you give it to, they're going to say thank you, and you are going to enjoy the benefits of having all the vitamins, all the minerals, all the nutrients your body needs in one very reasonably priced product. Just go to cpnlive.com and everything's right there. You'll be able to read all the ingredients. The price is right there, a flat price delivered to your door anywhere in the United States of America. Sonic Life is a gift, a great gift. Give it to yourself. I do. Hey, my name is Stan Solomon, and you know if I have something to say, I'll say it. And I'll only tell you the truth because I'm a Republican, not a Democrat. Democrats always lie. Republicans only lie half the time. I don't lie at all. This is the fuel mule. It's an extraordinary product that was developed by a friend of mine, an engineer, and it increases the fuel mileage on your vehicle. If you have a combustion engine, this will increase your mileage by 10 to 20 percent. It bolts around your fuel line. You can install it yourself or have your mechanic do it. It is an extraordinary item and it flat works. I've been using it for more than 10 years. It's increased my mileage on every vehicle I put it on. And by the way, it will last forever. You can get rid of your vehicle. Just take it off and put on the next one. Go to cpnlive.com. You'll have more information there. You can order it right there. We absolutely guarantee you'll be satisfied. The Fuel Mule. It's a way to kick down your cost of fuel and kick up your mileage. Don't you love the name? I thought of it. The Fuel Mule. I like to eat. Do you like to eat? We all do. And usually we run to the grocery store, we run the convenience store, uh, or we have something in the fridge. But power's been out in parts of this country in the last few weeks. Uh, we don't know what's going to come down the pike economically. Smart people are putting in food. Alpine Air Gourmet Reserves is a line of foods that you can put away that will last for a very long time. You know, they say eat what you store and store what you eat. This is great tasting stuff, healthy for you, a full line. You go to our website, cpnlive.com, and click on the button for Alpine Air Gourmet Reserves and see all the different things we have. This is good tasting food. It's reasonably priced. It will last. And it's worth its weight in gold if a problem arises. I know you don't think there's going to be anything that goes wrong. Actually, you do. This is smart. This is smart insurance. This is smart preparation. This is smart thinking. You have kids. You have a spouse. You have parents. You have dependents. Uh, you have an appetite. All those things can be addressed by a, a, a frugal but smart investment in Alpine Air Gourmet Reserves. Try them out you will be tickled to death with the taste of them. You know what? In many cases, people start to eat this, and they think, heck, this tastes better and costs less than what you're going to the grocery store and buy. CPMLive.com, check it out.